Uh, so this is a warning. This game contains references to topics such as suicide and trauma, which some players may find distressing. So if you don't want to watch a video that could contain that, um, do go enjoy a different video of a different game. Hello, my name is Jupiter Hadley, and today we're playing the game Rain Swept. I played an early, early version of this game when it was seeking funding um, and enjoyed it. The game's now been fully released on Steam. Uh, its full price is £9.29, though currently it's 15% off at £7.89. Um, if you like this game and you want to check it out, there's going to be a link in the description, and if you want to check me out, all my info is also in the description, so you can follow me on various social media networks and support my content on Patreon if you'd like. Alright. Monday, 12.14am, October 7th, 1996. Quite the shocking start. Monday, 7.39 a.m. October 7th, 1996. God damn, it's really coming down. I hope I don't catch a cold again. Alright. Use arrow keys or mouse to select further options. Da da da. That's my car. Alright, so we're the detective. This guy probably terrible. What did you say? I can't hear you over the rain. I said terrible, terrible business. All this. Hmm. An open window. Part. It's only a matter of what you know, man. Man, please, you need to back away a little. What happened? Uh, what's happening here? A murder? Johnny, get under the umbrella. Granny, I want to leave. It's really cold. Can we go back to the shop now. We could all see this coming a mile away. Ma'am, please. Granny, please. All right, Johnny, let's go. There's no point in standing here now. I knew this would happen. We, we should have done something. There's nothing we could have done. Chris did this, I'm sure of it. Uh, does it, it doesn't look like that, does it? Hmm. Detective Stone, right? The chief's inside. We've been waiting for you. All right. You need to control the crowd, officer. You need to push the crowd away from the scene, officer. What? You'll have to speak up. I can't hear you over the rain. The crowd. Handle them. There could be evidence out here. We can't have a crowd trampling all over evidence. Oh, yes, I'm trying. Hey, hey, Williams, what the hell are you doing? Trying to prop up this tape, sir, I won't say. We'll get some sticks and drive them in. Yes, sir. Richard. Don't call for Richard. Richard's on leave. Do it yourself. Goodness. Sorry, Detective. The thing is, we're short of manpower here. We weren't prepared for this kind of thing. First time in decades. And to top it all off, this goddamn rain. Just get the crowd in control. I'm heading inside. Yes, Detective. Don't worry. Richard, I mean Williams. Alright. Alright. I'm just trying to get used to, like, how this works. Now what's he up to? He's propping up the tape. We know what he's up to. The crowd is too close to the crime scene. Number of cops are f the number of cops are few. This is poor. Hmm, should I go in? Yeah. No point in hanging around here. Yep, this is a crime scene. Oh, God. That's the sheriff. I should talk to him first. Not very professional. I hope they know what they're doing. 
Michael? Huh? Bug. Detective, are you okay? You just fell to the floor, so probably not. Uh, I think so, yeah. Guess I just got a little tired after the long drive here. Uh, okay, if you say so. Detective Stone, right? The head office called in to say that you'd be joining us here for investigation. I'm Sheriff Harris, and this is Officer Watts. We appreciate the department sending help, but er, I don't think we'll need it. This case is ready to be wrapped up. What do we have here? The victims here are Christopher Green, age 26, died from a bullet wound to the head, looks self-inflicted, and Diana Miller, age 24, single bullet wound through the abdomen. The victims lived together, were unmarried. Any signs of an intruder? No signs of forced entry. The door was locked from the inside when we arrived. An officer climbed through the open window here to open the door. There are no footprints outside that window. Except the officers. He was careful. No signs of struggle or marks on the body either. Time of death. According to the next door neighbor, a single gunshot was heard around 0.15 hours. We received a call at about 20 at 0.20 hours, and we were here in another five minutes. We found them dead upon arrival and conferred the timing. Uh, what do we know about the weapons? Both shots were fired from a .38 caliber special revolver. The ballistics report will let us know more. Any witnesses? Just the next door neighbor who claims to have heard a single gunshot. We can interview him shortly. Honestly speaking, detective, we think it's pretty obvious what has taken place here. What do you mean? They had a reputation. They weren't exactly a happy couple. The whole town knows. Diana was shot at point blank range with Chris's gun, probably by Chris. Then he went ahead and shot himself, as the wound was clearly self-inflicted. So you see, sending you here unnecessarily complicates things. It's obviously a case of murder-suicide, detective. So everything's figured out already. If that was sarcasm, I'll ignore it, but yes, more or less. I are, are you suggesting there was domestic violence involved? It would seem so. It was never reported, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. So rumors. You may call it that, but, uh, there's, but uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm not sure that... And they were never really able to fit in this town. They were new here, moved in about six months ago, never got out much, didn't make any friends. We don't need to analyze the obvious, detective. That would only be inefficient. This is Officer Blunt. She will assist you through your course of work here. Hello, detective. And uh, one more thing. We're looking to wrap this case up quickly and cleanly. We don't want to drag it if it can be helped. We have an important festival coming around in a week's time. So you might say this is a rather bad timing, so there's no need to go around complicating things, all right? Just give me a story that works and we can close the case quickly. Okay. Good, I shall see you later. Okay, then. Um, anyway, uh, have a look around the room if you like. Come talk to me when you're done. This is really annoying that they don't want to investigate. Hmm, <clears throat> what's this? It's a sign. It's signed Chris96. I'm guessing Chris built some of the furniture around this house. Yep, probably. A 38 caliber special, as Officer Watts said. It looks pretty old. It can hold six rounds. It's a revolver, so it wouldn't have ejected the shell casings. They should still be in the barrel. Uh, there are three unused rounds in here and three spent shell casing, which means three rounds were fired from this gun at the point of timing. Two were fired last night. Where's the third? Or was it shot last night or on some other day? The gun belonged to Chris, according to Officer Watts. Let's assume Chris or Diane weren't the ones to use it. Is there anyone else who could have known where they kept the gun? From Pineview? I really doubt it. Remember, no signs of force entry. Could it be someone they were comfortable with or trusted? No one I can think of. Hmm. Um, 38 special rounds, a box of 50. There are 44 here, which means six are missing. Two were used last night. There was still three loaded in the gun, as we saw earlier. If two were shot last night, there's still one accounted for. Was that shot last night or on some other day? Bullet wound to the head. The skull is badly damaged. Most of the side has been blown off. His body position, the way he fell, would indicate that he was sitting sideways in the chair, facing where Diane's body is now. The angle of the shot indicates that he was shot from the side. If someone shot him, they were standing in front of the refrigerator. No clues there, though. He could have been shot from that window. At the moment, it's shot might check for fingerprints or footprints outside. Could someone have entered and left through there? We should have fingerprints, results in a couple of days, detective. Don't forget there aren't any footprints outside. If someone shot him from outside, then Chris wouldn't have sat facing the refrigerator. That would make sense in a way the killer wouldn't need to enter the house. But in that case, who shot Diane? Hmm, gunpowder residue on his right hand. Hard to disagree with Officer Watts here. This is strong evidence for the victim shooting himself, unless it was made to look that way. His chair has fallen on its back. Looks like Chris fell off the chair before or after being shot. 
It's a lot of information, a lot of information. Red wine, it looks like a new bottle. It was opened yesterday. No one drank from this glass. It would seem that Chris was sitting by himself at the table and drinking wine, waiting for someone to join him. Probably Diane. Whether he was waiting for her or someone else, we don't know yet. That's fair. A glass of wine was knocked over. It looks like wine, but there seems to be blood in there as well. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit, actually. Um, how did blood splatter in this direction? It doesn't make sense. These drops of blood feel out of place, too. Yeah, the three big splotches from way later. Officer Blight, I think there's more than the two guns that we're seeing here. I think there's more than the two guns. We're only seeing one gun, aren't we? Hmm. Go upstairs. Oh, we'll look at Diane. Gunshot to the stomach. The damage and residue would suggest that she was shot at point range, plank blank range. That rules out the possibility of her being shot from an open window. She would have been in line of sight from outside, though. There's no mistaking it. The, per the perpetrator would have to be inside the house to cause that kind of wound. Whether that was Chris or someone else, it's hard to say at the moment. I think that's everything. Lots of detectiving. Are we done here? Yes, I'm done. All right, let's have a chat with Mr. Willis outside. The rain finally let up. Yeah, everyone's gone as well. Right, this is Mr. Willis. He lives right there next door. Coffee detective? Yes, please. You can ask many questions you may have about last night. Right, Mr. Willis, can you tell me everything you saw or heard during last night's events? Well, see, I'm headed off to bed around 11 p.m., as I usually do after a glass of whiskey. It helps me sleep, you know. Anyway, somewhere around 12, 15 a.m., I'd say I was woken by a loud bang, a rent from a bedroom window that looked straight down at their place, and what did you see? Nothing. Their kitchen lights were on, but that's about it. I went to my phone and called Officer Watts here straight away. How long did it take you to get to the window once you heard the shot? About a couple of seconds, Detective. Not more than five, I'd say. I nearly fell off my bed when I heard the shots. You might say I was halfway there already. Did you see anyone on the streets? Uh, did you see any sort of activity on the streets? Anything unusual? No, Detective. Everything was the same as always. You said you only heard one shot. Yes, the whiskey usually knocks me out pretty good, so if there'd been more, I didn't hear them. Um, did they have many visitors? Did Chris and Diane have many visitors, friends, etc.? No, no, not at all, in fact. That's really weird. And this time, I only maybe saw Jack coming over to fix their car. Nah, people rarely ever visit them because they mostly kept to themselves. See, never made any friends here, but sometimes folks don't like those kind either, so I can't really say, you know? No, please elaborate. You won't find anyone crying over their deaths here. Nobody really knew them. They never got out much. That's, that's really like a cold and hard thing to say. Do you live alone? <laughs> yes, I do. Never got married. It's a long story. Uh, one meant we talked over a couple of whiskeys. Know what I mean? <laughs> Can anyone confirm your whereabouts? I know. I was at home, you see. Am I a suspect? It's procedure, Mr. Will. I know Mr. Willis. He's cool. Uh, we'll ignore that. Any other information you'd like to share with us, Mr. Willis? I don't know if it's useful, but you might have heard about Chris and Diane. They looked pretty happy when they first moved in. More recently, though, I heard Diane crying a couple of times, usually late at night. See, the whiskey knocks me out early, so maybe that's why I never heard all this before. But a couple of times, I was up a little later. One night about a month ago, I heard, I heard pretty bad things. There were some loud shouts, like stuff being flung around and such. See? I heard someone crying. I was thinking to myself that maybe I should call the police, but then it quieted down all of a sudden. Never received any calls for domestic violence, but people often talked of stories of this kind. Can you remember when you heard this, Mr. Willis? You could have saved everyone if you just called someone. Well, I was up late at night with an important letter. I think it must have been somewhere between the 1st and 3rd last month. The 1st and 3rd of September, right? Anything else? No, that's about all I know about this. Right, thank you for your help, Mr. Willis. We'll be in touch if we need anything else. No problem, and uh, thanks for the coffee. Hmm. Hmm, so now we've like looked at the scene. I mean, I feel like this whole town isn't really seeing the whole picture here. <laughs> well, I think that cleared up a lot of things. It has? Oh, come on, detective. You're supposed to be good at these things, aren't you? Mr. Willis didn't see anything outside the house after the gunshots. There's no sign of anyone forcing entry either. On top of that, considering how rough things were between the two of them, you heard what Mr. Willis said, right? We don't have the complete picture yet. The amount of information we have uh, out of now is very little, not the complete picture. I went to grab a refill of my drink, because this is a lot of reading. Alright, I'm back. 
We need to dig deeper if we want to know the truth, not just confirm our assumptions. Well, what about the door, huh? It was locked from the inside. Explain that. I checked the door. It locks itself from the inside when you pull it closed, whether you pull it from the outside or push it from the inside. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying there's no conclusive evidence yet. Well, fine, then dig as deep as you'd like, detective, if you won't find anything new here. I was perfectly capable of handling this case myself, but of course the head department had to complicate things. In any case, Sheriff Willis will probably want to wrap up this case before the festival, so don't expect him to wait for more than a week. I have to head to the station now, officer. Escort Detective Stone to his hotel. Will do, sir. A little crap, really. We'll come back in the evening to search the house, letters, diaries, that sort of thing. All right. Then we can ex when can we expect the autopsy results? Day after tomorrow, according to the coroner, but I'll confirm and let you know. I'm guessing there were more than two bullets shot last night. We should take another look around the kitchen to make sure. Three bullets, but, hmm. We're actually glad that you're here, you know, although the sheriff and officer Watts would rather not admit it, even to themselves. This is like the first murder here in the last hundred years or so. We had no idea how to deal with it. Um, I mean, yeah, that's a surprise. Come on, detective, you don't need to be rude. I, anyway, as I was saying, I just joined the force a month back, for instance, and a murder already. I'm not sure if I'm ready. I kind of knew them, you could say. I'd never known anyone that's been murdered before, you know? It's kind of weird, a bit sad. I know as an officer I'm not supposed to feel that way and all. It'll be fine. Give it time. Thanks, detective. Um... What's this ne fe What's this festival next weekend? The sheriff said there's a festival in town next week. What's that about? Well, it's an annual thing. We have it every October. There's a fair and on the sh Market Street. There's rides, food. We get a lot of tourists from nearby states around that time. It's a good source of revenue for some of our smaller businesses here. That, of course, is less important than the light of recent events. Good to hear you say that. Of course, we can't go around trying to wrap up cases based on our assumptions, whatever the situation may be. I mean, these are people's lives that ended, and it's our job to figure out what really happened. So I guess what I'm saying is, you can count on me during this investigation. Thanks. Tell me, what do you know about Chris and Diane? Well, not much. It's mostly what Mr. Willis said earlier. Nobody knew them, really. They came in here, kept to themselves, you hear stories about them. Everyone thought they were some kind of weirdos. I admit, I kind of agreed with that sentiment, too. I feel bad about that now. There's no reason to make assumptions about people's character, and character can't be used as evidence, so I'd really like to help figure out what the real story is, whatever it may be. I'm hoping the local police will let me do the job I've been sent here to do, though. I don't mean you, detective, I know what you mean. Honestly speaking, Sheriff Harris is an asshole. I'm serious, he doesn't care about anything except running off home and taking it easy. This case probably ruined his plans to re relax and enjoy the festival week. I really hate people like that. Officer Watts, though, he's really sweet. I know he comes across as a little obnoxious, but... Oh my god. Okay. I saw her. She was right there. Why am I seeing her? Why am I thinking of her? My poor car. Oh, sorry. I keep clicking to move, which isn't how you move. He said his name's Jack. It's a good thing he was passing by when the crash happened. Hey, Jack. Sup, dude. What's the issue with the car? Well, the headlights and bumpers gone. We'll have to have them replaced. Uh, I'm going to go check if I got a replacement part so I can fix it. How long do you, will it take you to fix it? A couple of days, three maybe, depending on how quickly I can get the parts. Shouldn't take more than four days at most. Oh boy. Hey dude, can you fetch my big red wrench? It should be in the toolbox outside. Alright. You're amazing, bud. Thanks. I mean, this isn't very good. Jack's out of repair shop. Jack's the name of the guy fixing my car. Must be a shop then. Jeez, I hope she's not hurt. Does Jack need your help? Talk to me when you're done. Doesn't Jack need your help? Talk to me when you're done. I don't know where this toolbox is. And how do you know Jack needs my help? Maybe I'm just talking to you to talk to you. Hmm. Maybe the toolbox is this way. Jack, use that to get us here. Uh, it's locked. I'll need to ask Jack for the key. 
Jack, why didn't you give me the key? Why are you making me walk around so much? The toolbox is locked, Jack. Oh, that's weird. Why did I lock it? Anyway, the key should be somewhere among the stuff behind your car. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Mm, so in this junk over here. Alright, I got the key. Hmm, tar shovel. Wonder what Jack uses them for. Uh, that opened it. Let's see what's in here. Take big red wrench. This must be it. Okay. That's it. I love this wrench. Thanks, bud. I wonder what the difference is between the two wrenches. Ask about convertible. That red convertible there, is that yours? Yeah, man, it's a 65 Mustang. I love that ride. I uh, got it used for pretty cheap off a guy who couldn't take care of it anymore. Luckily, the car's got something that keeps it running like new now. The big red wrench. You know, the red wrench is pretty awesome, but it's nothing if it's not got someone who can make it work. Me. I spend all my free time on her fixing her up and making sure she runs better than new. Uh, and I keep her happy by taking her on long, beautiful drives the roads outside the town. Ask about tow and shovel. You've got a shovel and some tar there. What do you use those for? Um, that dude, I do a bit of construction work on the side sometimes, you know, fixing up driveways and stuff for some extra cash. Detective, you're investigating Dan, Dan's murder, right? Yeah, and Chris, yeah. Do you have any information that could help us? I don't know about information, man. I just know he did it. What do you mean? Chris, he killed her. Uh, did you know them? Not really. People here barely did. They were not the kind to come out and make friends with their new neighbors, it looks like. They still felt like outsiders to the rest of us. Why do you say this? I, everyone could see it coming. Diane, they said she was troubled, scared of him even. Someone in this town should have done something. We all knew this could happen, but no one cared enough about them to bother interfering. How do you know all this? I, um, I don't know. Rumors around the town, mostly. What were you doing last night? I, what was I doing last night? Yeah, that's what I asked. Oh, right. I drove a couple of miles from here and drank a few beers while I enjoyed the view at night. Yeah, the stars, man, you see. Was there anyone with you? Did you meet anyone? Nah, man, there's nothing like the pleasure of your own company sometimes. All right, thanks for your help, Jack. We shall be back if we have any more questions. Of course you will. What do you mean, Jack? For your car, man, come back when it's fixed. You get way too serious, way too fast, man. Chill out. Wow, there's notes about Jack. He seems suspicious. Oh, she got up. Hey, hi. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, surprisingly. I'm really sorry about the crash. I don't know what. It's alright, especially since the day. Since. Especially since we're okay. Something else worries me, though. What's that? What happened back there? How'd we hit that tree? I thought I saw something. What did you see? A person. I thought I saw a person. That's kind of creepy. Yeah. Are you okay otherwise? I mean, I don't know you, so I don't know if this is a regular thing or no offense. That's okay, I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, you collapsed back at the crime scene too, and then this. Yeah, I don't know, I've been a little dizzy all day. Maybe I just need a nap. Seeing this kind of stuff, seeing this kind of stuff kind of bums me out. Um, I'm just saying, if there's anything wrong, you can talk to me about it. Don't hesitate. I won't. Detective. I'm gonna drive to the next town for a bit. Want me to drop you off that way? Well, yeah, beats walking all the way there. Here we are, the famous Pine View Main Street. I'm kidding, not much to see here, really. Let's see if we can talk to some of the locals on the way to the hotel. All right, it's been a, all right. It isn't very busy this time of day, but there should be a few people out here. Father Smith knows a lot about Pine View. It'd be a good idea to talk to him before heading to the hotel. He should be around St. Madeline's Church. Also, there's a map of Pine View so you can get around by yourself. Press N. Okay. Awesome. And talk to Father Smith. Cool. Nope. Wonderful. Guess we get talking. This is a very nice graphic style. 
So I wonder what's going on with this detective and like the flashbacks that he's seeing and the people that he's seeing and whatnot. It seems kind of bad. You should come here for breakfast someday. The owner Mark is a pretty great guy. You mean me? Hey detective, you're here investigating the shootings, right? Yes I am. The whole thing is so tragic. Anyway, do you want some tea? Coffee? This is my cafe here. No, that's right, I. Come over here if you want a pint. Keep your unhealthy habits to yourself, Alan. Too much coffee's unhealthy too. <laughs> also, if you haven't noticed, he's already smoking a cigarette. Ignore him, he just likes to annoy me. And I let it get to me all the same. Who is that? That's Alan, owner of the bar next door, and my brother. Twin brother. Not that you would know by the way we lead our lives. I don't know how we ended up as polar opposites. I know, I got all the good stuff. Ugh. Anyway, you had questions? Uh, how long has it been since you moved to Pineview, Mark? I was born here. My family lived here for many years before that. We left the city when I was about 10. My dad was looking for better work. I returned as soon as I graduated about nine years back. I prefer the life here. Big cities aren't for me. Now it's just me, my books, and my coffee shop. Life is simple and I love it. Did Alan also come with you at the same time? No, Alan. He only joined me here uh, five years back to get a fresh start. Maybe he can tell you more about that. Uh, about Chris and Diane. Did you see them often? No, no, barely. A handful of times, maybe. They came to the cafe a few times, but that was in the early days, and they just moved in. They wouldn't say much to me or anyone else in here, and mostly kept to themselves. Or I could say they didn't have eyes for anyone else, to put it bluntly. They looked very much in love. Huh, that's good. You tell me, is there anything else you can tell me about them? Anything that stands out? Well, I kind of identified with Chris in a way. It sounded like he moved here for peace of mind this place provides, and to start a small business for himself. What business? He'd been trying to get a hotel project off the ground here, from what I hear. He had trouble getting the project approved. Maybe Father Smith can tell us more about it. He's involved in the planning committee. Um, where were you last night? Sure, as always, I closed my place by 8pm. I bought some supplies from the general store down the street and then went home. I see the storekeeper will remember that. Yes, Miss Brown was in last night at the time. She should be able to confirm what I just said. And Alan can confirm this. He didn't come to work yesterday. He took a day off. Uh, said he was feeling unwell, so he stayed at home all day. Looks like it's passed, luckily. He looks fine today. Anyway, I went back home after that, changed, and went for a jog as usual. Came back, took a nice, long, warm bath, made myself a cup of coffee, and had dinner with my wife. Then read a book for an hour or so. Probably was asleep by 10.30, as always. Notice anything unusual these past few days. Anything out of the ordinary. Um, no, I can't say that I have. Everything's been pretty much the same as usual. Alright, Mark, we'll talk later. I mean, he obviously lives with his wife, so I don't need to ask that other question. Hmm, looks like Alan's locked up and left. That's alright, we can talk to him tomorrow. Grandpa's bakery. This is cute. Hello, I'm Grandpa. I'm not your grandpa, and your name is... Grandpa. Mr. Grandpa, I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. And I was wondering if I could ask Miss Brown there out on a date. But Wonders ain't doing it, is it? Just look at her, whole oh boy, makes you feel 40 years younger she does. <laughs> Do you even plan to grow up, Grandpa? Any more growing up and I might just die. I ain't planning on doing that before I ask you out. Goodness, such immaturity at this age. She likes me, I know she does. You're deluded. Woohoo! Anybody had questions, young man? I thought I did. Can you tell me about Chris and Diane? When they first moved in, Chris would often come in the evenings and buy some things for me. He'd come in daily almost, looked pretty cheerful too. Then a couple of months after, he stopped coming in. Last few times he came, I couldn't. S I could see that something wasn't right. Maybe trouble with his lady, I don't know. He and Diane went to church maybe a couple times. Once or twice they came here after for coffee and donuts. Uh, they were quite a couple, I tell ya. He was the quiet and nonchalant one. She was an exciting electrifying energy. A classic case of opposites attracted to each other. If what people say is true, I don't know how things went so wrong so fast, but then these things you can never say. That was all about four to five months back. After that, I hardly ever saw them out here again. I don't think that he's the one that's done anything. Have you noticed anything unusual out of the ordinary in recent days? Hmm, now that I think about it, I might actually have had. Yes. Miss Brown has been tying her hair much tighter bun lately. I wonder what that means. Is she softening up or trying to hide the fact? Uh, Grandpa, you notice these things. I mean it when I say it. Beautiful. I'm a passionate lover. <laughs> Very passionate. Damn it, Grandpa. Ahem, hello. I was talking about possible murders. Did you notice anything unusual leading up to that? Hmm, no, much the same. Can't say I did. We'll talk later. Who are you calling Grandpa? I am not your Grandpa. It's one way to name bakery. 
He may be kind of creepy at times, but he sure knows how to bake well. I may be old, but I'm not completely deaf, you know. Sorry, Grandpa. I'm not your Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa's funny. Those donuts sure do look good. What do you mean they look good? They're the best in Pineview. The best damn donuts made with Grandpa's love and warmth. Wanna buy some? Maybe later. Thanks, Gramps. What do you call me? <laughs> I think we're gonna move forward, because I feel like everyone's saying, actually, he said something different. Hello, detective. All right, we can't actually question him. I already know her opinions. Her opinions is that, you know, they've done it, blah, blah. This leads over the road that'll take me to the hotel. Okay, well, we need to talk to the church person, so. I guess we need to walk up this massive hill. This is really pretty. It's a very cin cinematic game. Father Smith. Ah, hello, Detective Stone. Detective Stone. First time in Pineview, I assume? Yes, only just arrived. I wanted... That's good, that's good. What do you think of it? Do you like it here? It's peaceful. I'll admit that. It is, isn't it? You must enjoy your time here. The change of pace must feel good coming from the city. But then you must want to preserve this peace too, yes? Leave here without taking anything away from us? There's a way of life here, and I do my best to maintain that, for the good of my people. The ones that are here on more than just a merry whim. I see. Anyway, Detective, you had questions. Can you tell me about the hotel project? I heard Chris was trying to start a hotel here. As you were part of Pine View's planning committee, can you tell me what that was about exactly? I'm sure Chris wanted to open a hotel with about 40 rooms or so. He said he wanted to keep it small in accordance to our bylaws, but even 40 was almost pushing it. These things always grow out of hand. Once the tourists start coming in, they'd see how untouched a place Pineville really is. Demand would increase, and of course, Chris wouldn't want to pass up on the opportunity to cash out on that. Regardless, we never got to that point. Chris always kept messing up. Chris always kept messing up his papers whenever he came in for approval. He either misplaced them or mess up some of the detail. There were delays in the construction site too. I guess the delays cost him money. It was all going downhill fast, and well, this happened. About Chris and Diane. What can you tell me about Chris and Diane? Did you know them well? Not too well. They came in church a couple of times after they'd moved to Pineville, but soon stopped coming at all. They withdrew themselves from the rest of the community, and I can't say that helped them. Friends can help in difficult times, and it's obvious they were beginning to have a really difficult time by the end. If they'd continued to come to church, I could have offered some guidance. Sometimes relationships can entangle you. But unfortunately, but unfortunately it had to come to this. Whatever their troubles, it looks like they've made each other suffer for it. I'm sure you'll learn most of us here already know. In any case, I wish you luck on your investigation. Where were you last night? I was here all night. I finished up some work and went to bed at a, by 10 p.m., I'd say. We'll talk later, Father Smith. I'm sure we will. We have a new task. Go to the hotel. Oh, it's not WASD. Uh, sorry, it's WASD, not arrow keys. It's pressing arrow keys, waiting to see what happens. So we'll walk very slowly down this hill. My detective friend just running so so far behind me. All right, then the hotel's further down Overlook Street. Check map if you get confused. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Mark's Cafe. Sounds good. See you, officer. Take care, detective. All right, so I'm here. 
Hotel. No, no, there's just arrows. These are just arrows. Okay. Overlook Street, so I just walk forward, really. You know Chris killed her, right? What? How do you know that? I don't know, that's what everyone says happens. Anyway, are you gonna play the game I gave you? Not yet. <laughs> no, not yet, man. I mean, rumors don't prove much. A couple of people even said they were happy. And I mean, Chris could have just been not going to events and stuff because not going to church and not going to the bakery anymore because he was busy trying to plan for a hotel. Hmm. This is my hotel. Some lady gardening. Oh, hello. I'm Mary Patterson. I run this hotel with my husband. You're Detective Stone, I presume? I, yes, I am. Good to meet you. I prepared our best room on the top floor for you. It isn't the biggest establishment, so it isn't too fancy, but I think you'll like it here. You must be tired. There's hot water in your room and dinner's ready. Come on, I'll show you the way. Thank you, Miss Patterson. Well, I'm glad we talked to her. Uh, hotel rooms, they all feel the same, don't they? Well, I, I guess so. Reminds me of better times. Look, this is the way to the bathroom. Hmm, I don't need to right now. Should I go anyway? Yeah, use the toilet. Better go before I go to sleep. Don't want to get up in the middle of the night. It's kind of chilly. Okay. That feels good. That's better. My clothes are in here. I can change if I want. Yeah, you should probably change into pajamas. <laughs> John. We can change into John. Stressed out. John. Formal, casual, sleepwear. Cool. It's a beautiful view. Pine is a beautiful place. Painfully beautiful. It's too cold to go outside. I didn't realize there's a balcony. I was trying to close the curtains. Hmm, should I go to sleep now? Yes. I really need to get some sleep today. What the hell happened back there today? After all these days? God damn. Why are you still smoking? You're gonna die. No, Mark, there's no peace of mind here. The silence it only lets your thoughts speak louder. Alright. I'm guessing this is a dream. Yeah, am I dreaming? I think so. Hmm. A lot of red. This is a horrible dream. Yeah, you're just walking forward in some weird red world. Guess we'll have to fall. Oh god, no. No, I don't want to see this. I don't want to remember. I need to get out. Why am I here? I need to wake up. I need to wake up. Wake up. It's bashy and you wake up. Something's definitely haunting the detective. What the? Am I awake? I, I can't move. This is horrifying. What's going on? This is like a thing that happens to people, isn't it? Ah. 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 This is hopeless. I can't. Wait, what's that? Oh, what the hell? You're still sleeping, basically. Holy... Abigail? Is that you? Michael. You did this. Why? How could you? I don't know. I... How could you live after doing something like that? You've no idea how hard it is to go on without you. Then why go on? What's the point? What's the point? I don't know. I have to. For your happiness? Do you feel you deserve that anymore? For this case? Do you think anyone even cares about it? For whom, Michael? 
You protect yourself from thoughts about me. You need to hide me from yourself so that you can live. Is it worth it? I... No, I'm not sure. I miss you, Michael. That was creepy. <laughs> right, another normal day. Work as usual, I guess. Should probably talk to a psychiatrist. But I think I'm going to stop here. Um, this is going to end up exploring both the case as well as the stuff that's going on and what's haunting him. Um, yeah, not everything is as it seems. In the demo I played, I obviously um, wrote up a full article, so I played a lot more of the game. Um, and there is a lot to be seen um, in this day, even. And it's looked like it came quite far, and it's really well done. Um, if you'd like to check out Rain Step, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, thank you very much for watching and liking and commenting and subscribing. Bye.